Hello and welcome to another video. This time we're going to take a look at the various options that we have to customise the look of Affinity Photo. We're going to start with the panels and tabs on the right hand side. It's what Affinity calls the studio. Then we can have a look at the toolbox and set in the foreground and background colours into the toolbox. Right, let's make a start with the panels and tabs. Now we can move them around. This is the default position. If I click on layers, I can move this across so you can put them into any position you want. To give yourself a little bit more space, if you bring your cursor down, you can see we've got that double arrow, I can make the bottom panel here a little bit smaller, giving our layers more space. But if you double click on any of the tabs, for example on channels, double click it will fold it down out of the way. The same applies to this row, double click on any of them will fold it down. If I just double click on colour, that's folded that down out of the way and now you can see the layers. Click on any of the tabs, we'll bring it back. If I come to the bottom, clicking on history, and there we are. But there's more. With the tabs, if you don't use them, why not remove them? Swatches, I don't use those. I'm going to bring them out into the workspace. Brushes, let's bring that out as well. Colour, yes I use it, but as I said when we started off, I want to put these colours into the toolbox. So for now, we can remove it. If I come down to the next row, we've got layers, adjustments, use them all the time, effects, no, not a lot, let's bring this out, same with styles, bring in those out as well, go into stock, no, let's drag that out, clicking on the little cross, it's going to close them down. Navigator, I don't use this, but I know a lot of you do, and what you can always do is drag it up, place it into the top panel here. Coming down, transform, no, clicking on this, closing it down, history all the time, and yep, 32-bit preview, moving this out, let's close that down. Now what we can do is lift history up, I'm going to place it in with the layers and adjustments, coming to channels, lifting this up, placing it up with layers, adjustments, there it is in history, giving our layers a lot more space. If you click on histogram, there it is. Don't forget, you can always double click to move it up out of the way. But there's more again. If I just click anywhere here, I can now click and hold, dragging it out, we can place this into the workspace. If I bring my cursor over this area, clicking down, we can now drag this out into the workspace and notice the way it seemed to just grab the bottom of our panels here, going into position, clicking on layers. If I bring my cursor up, we can click down, we can move this around and I find this really useful. Because for me, what I like to do is I like to be able to see the image. I'm not particularly interested in all the panels, the rulers and all the other bits and pieces. This is the important thing. Talking of this, if I use Command 1 or Control 1, there it is. We can now see 100% of the picture. You can move this into any position, which allows you to work in any region you want to. Right, let's just click, move this back over here. Right, some of those tabs we close down. Brushes, for example. What if you want to use those? Head to View. Come down to Studio. And if we come across, there's Brushes. Simply click on it. There it is, it's back. And if you do use them a lot, yes, I use them a lot on Masking. Simply click on it. We can now bring it back. We can put it back into our panels over here. Right, I mentioned about the colours, the black and white. Now, let's head back up to View. We're going to head down to Customize Tools. And with Customize Tools, yeah, we can do several different things. For example, I can click on this tool, the, what's it, the, the Fill tool. I can drag on it. If I don't use it, I can place it over there. You can also click on some of the other tools. You can move them around into various positions. Now, if you think, well, yes, my Lens Blur tool, that could be really useful. Simply click on it, drag it. You can place it into the toolbox. Now with all of these, if you want to go back to the default, simply click on Reset. Back it goes. But looking around here, there's no foreground and background colour. But let's head down to Number of Columns. Click in here, we can have up to 8 columns. Now that seems to be defeating the object, because now we're going to be seeing less of the image. So let's compromise. Let's go for 2 columns. Still no foreground and background colour. Clicking on close, there they are. 
Right, if I press X on the keyboard, we're going to swap the foreground with the background. Looks pretty good. If I double click, it's going to bring up the color chooser, just like we had in Photoshop. Fantastic, or what? Clicking on red, let's click close. If I press D on the keyboard, unlike Photoshop, nothing happens. So we have to head up to edit. If you're using a Mac, head across to where it says Affinity Photo, head down to Preferences. Now with Preferences, go to Keyboard Shortcuts. Coming to Photo, we're gonna to go to Fill. Now this is where you can change any of the shortcuts. You can add your own shortcuts as well to any of these. If I come right the way down to the bottom to Miscellaneous, down here we have got Set Fill to Black and White. It's empty. Clicking in the window, I'm going to press D on the keyboard. Set fill to 50% grey. Yes, I used to use that a lot in Photoshop. So I'm going to click in the window. And the Photoshop shortcut was Shift Backspace on a PC. It is Shift and Delete on a Mac. There we are. We can now click Close. And when I press D on the keyboard, that has restored those default colours. Shift Backspace, Shift Delete. We now have 50% grey. D on the keyboard to restore those default colors. Brilliant. Right, let's head back up to Edit or to Affinity Photo if you're using a Mac, back down to Preferences, just a few other little bits and pieces. If we come to General, just make sure that you've got Import PSD Text as text rather than bitmap. Very important if you've got text on your image. Next, put a tick in the box for import PSD smart objects where possible. Also, put a tick in the box for ensure save over imported PSD files. Again, very important. Let's come back over here. Let's come across to interface. We've got uh, light and dark. If I click on light, sunglasses, please. When you click on this, it is extremely bright. I know some of you do use this, but if you want to go to dark, this is where you can change it. Now, if I just use Command-0, Control-0, we can go to fit on screen. Looking at the background, you can change the background here. I'm dropping it down. I like it quite dark. I think dark just helps to bring out the colors, the tones in the image. It allows you to see it better. So I tend to drop mine down a little bit further. Right, clicking back on this, we're gonna come across to Tools. And with Tools, use mouse wheel to zoom, which is very handy if you're using a mouse with a wheel. Right, clicking on Close, I am using a mouse with a wheel. And as we can see, we can now zoom in or out using that mouse wheel. You can also see it on Navigator if you happen to use this. You can also go back over to Histogram. If the panels become separated, all you need to do is just simply click on it, moving it up, it's now clicked together. If I click on the top one here, we can now move them round again. If you want to reset these panels, simply head back up to View. If you come down to Studio, come down to the bottom and you have got Reset Studio. Back it goes to those default positions. Well, there it is. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. And don't forget to subscribe. There's plenty more videos to come. Click that little bell icon. That way you'll receive a notification every time a new video is posted. But until the next time, it's happy imaging and take care.